My name is Johanna Miller Lewis. Today is March 31st, 2004. I'm professor and chair of the history department at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, and I am interviewing Carlotta Walls Lanier, a member of the Little Rock Nine, for the National Park Service Oral History Project on the Little Rock Crisis. So I think we'll just begin at the beginning, and if you could uh, say a little bit about when and where you were born. Okay. Um, born here in Little Rock, Arkansas um, in 1942, and um, lived uh, what was considered the West End at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I now live in uh, Inglewood, Colorado, a suburb right outside of Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Um, if you could talk a little bit about your home and the neighborhood when you were growing up. Our neighborhood was very, uh, very close, I would say. Um, the uh, one of uh, the teachers at uh, Dunbar High School was a neighbor, um, and a relative, an uncle, a great uncle, I should say, was a, a neighbor. Um, the neighborhood was, um, my block was pretty much, uh, was all African Americans, or at that time we called ourselves Negroes and colored, so it was colored. Uh, one block away um, was a neighborhood of white kids mm -hmm. and, um, and a big open field in between. So um, that, uh, the neighborhood was rather close as far as that goes, and um, a comfortable neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the open field, did you play with your neighbors? Yes. We did. Um, played, um, you know, school was out Memorial Day and school started l the day right. after Labor Day. So all summer long in that big open field, we played ball together, blacks and whites alike. So mm -hmm. it was um, um, a situation where um, we communicated during the summertime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, in, a, in addition to that, are there any sort of particular experiences or memories sort of from your early childhood that stand out in your mind as having an impact on you later? Um, as far as playing with the other kids and so forth, not so much. It's just that I knew that, um, uh, I mean, they accepted me and the other uh, Negro kids or col colored kids as an equal on the playing field. Uh, we talked the same kind of language. We talked about, you know, baseball. We talked about our schools, um, our uh, involvement in whatever we were doing, you know, at various uh, at various schools. Um, we got along. That that that's the one thing that I do remember. Um, I, I just, it, I had nothing that really stood out other than the fact that, you know, I was a pretty good ball, ball player, so I got chosen on both sides. You know, we, we mixed our teams, sure. you know, so not only by race, but by gender too, because mm -hmm. there were about <laughs> three girls that did play baseball. <laughs> So. Um, let's see, I am assuming that you went to Gibbs for elementary? No. no? I went to Su Stevens, Stevens mm -hmm. Elementary School, which was um, about three blocks from my house. And um, uh, it was a neighborhood school. Mm -hmm. And um, um, that's, that's basically, you know, you know that's where I, I went to elementary school. And from there it, to from Dunbar? From there to Dunbar, Dunbar Junior Senior High School at the time. And um, again, I, there were my relatives that were <laughs> teaching at Dunbar <laughs> Junior and Senior High School. So the librarian was my, uh, uh, the cousin. Uh -huh. And um, I had another cousin that taught there, and my aunt was my gym teacher. <laughs> so. <laughs> and your mom I, went to Dunbar? Uh, oh, yeah. My mother and father both graduated from uh, Dunbar um, High School and Dunbar Junior College. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, while we're on, on family, if you could um, give me your parents' names sure. and occupations and your, and your uh, siblings. Sure. My, my father was Cartel Uwals, and um, he was a brick mason. 
and uh, was one who built, uh, was involved in a number of uh, large projects here in Little Rock uh, as far as schools go, oh, cool. building schools and churches um, and homes. But um, uh, my mother, Juanita uh, Cullen's Walls, um, both were born here mm -hmm. and um, um, have two sisters, one Luana Walls Terry and uh, Tina Walls, my, my youngest sister. Very proud of both of them. And um, they, uh, you know, they, I think all of the Little Rock Nine's child, uh, siblings um, probably got a, a little short of the stick due to the fact that the emphasis was on us at a, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, anyway, they've done very well. Good. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm curious um, how aware uh, you were about the the discrepancy sort of between Dunbar and Central. Uh, okay, I, I was ve very well aware as I be because of that interaction that we had in the summertime, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> I've said many times I wanted to be a doctor. I was really interested in medicine or uh, in the sciences when I was. Um, in, in junior high school. And um, while, while interacting with the white kids in the summertime, I knew that they would get new books. They would say, we're getting new books in the fall. We hear we're getting new books in the fall. And I was always happy for them because that meant to me that we were getting their yeah, books. Yeah, sure. And even though they were hand-me-down books, they were still newer than the books that we sure. were using. So that was one issue. The second issue was that as I passed that school every day, uh, Little Rock Central High School, I knew in the biology lab that two kids would be dissecting a frog where at, at Dunbar, Mr. Elson, the biology teacher there, would have 10 kids around one frog to dissect. So it was really about in inequality, this, this separate but equal was really not equal mm -hmm. uh, as far as the, the, the two schools, schools were concerned. Um, and our system here in Little Rock at the time, and, and not just Little Rock, the throughout the South, but um, and probably in a number of places in northern and midwestern cities too, but I'm, I'm talking about what happened here. So I was very well aware of the fact that um, the, the, the facilities itself, the school itself, both built about in the same era, were, you know, the difference was with size. Our teachers were great. I mean, I have looked back at those um, yearbooks, yeah. and I've noticed most of them had masters. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so as far as quality of teaching, in my mind, it was just as good, if not better, really, at Dunbar because they had to be more creative in teaching because they didn't have the equipment to mm -hmm. teach. Mm -hmm. And um, they had to create, you know, be creative in doing things um, to teach us certain things. So. Um, I, that that piece was very obvious. I mean, Aunt Eva, Eva Herndon was my, the, the librarian. I mean, she had 5,000 books that she was overseeing in the library, where yeah. it was 11,000 books over there at sure. Central. So, you know, trying to get the latest books and having the right reference books in the mm -hmm. library and so forth, I'm sure her requisition to the Little Rock School Board or wherever it was supposed to go, um, you know, you could only get so much. So it, um, and it was our tax dollars too. I mean, that, that's the part that kind of gets to you, that you, your, your parents are paying uh, taxes just like white parents, and, uh, but yet and still you're getting the short end of the stick when it comes down to those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So I, I was, you know, I, I knew about it because I'd hear about it at home and I'd hear about it at school. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, uh, and at 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 our various community uh, activities, um, 
you know, the older people would encourage us to do as well as we possibly could because, you know, things, you got to have an education and the key to success is through education. So I heard that. It was just something that was a innate with me. I mean, I, I grew up with it. And so, sure. you know, I, that that's what I fed on, mm -hmm. you know. Um, let me ask you this, because I think maybe you'll have a little bit more perspective, um, especially since your parents went to Dunbar. Uh, Dunbar, or the school board sort of made the announcement about Dunbar closing and becoming a, a junior high mm -hmm. in, in 55 in a rather sort of abrupt and unceremonious mm -hmm. manner. D do you remember that? Do your parents remember that? Um, oh, I'm sure my parents do, and I do too, to the point um, that I knew that there would be um, a new high school, which was Horace Mann. Now, that meant we had more space at that time when I was at Dunbar. And I was only there for a year, two years maybe, mm -hmm. my eighth and ninth grade year. See, in the seventh grade, how, you know, I know that junior, senior high school is probably not the best now that I look back on it. But we looked up to those seniors, oh, sure. to those senior high school kids. And um, I, um, you know, you wanted to emulate those that were doing well. And um, so when I would go into the library on, um, you know, my off period or study period or what have you, I just kind of marveled at those that were, um, you know, either monitors in the study hall mm -hmm. or monitors in the library, what have you, and they were in, in senior, they, they were in the senior high school part. Um, I remember Jimmy Pace and, and Sidney Williams both going off to Big Ten schools, Absolutely. okay, they had gotten football scholarships, but they couldn't have gone there if they hadn't been doing well sure. academically either. And, um, you know, Sidney is a, a, a uh, an attorney, uh, um, one of the first black patent attorneys in the country. So, you know, those sort of things, you know, you looked up to people sure. like that. Um, the same way with the, with the women. So it, um, then Horace Mann opened and I just knew that that's where the seniors, the senior high school part was at Horace Mann, which was a distance away from my home. Mm -hmm. uh, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, being aware of it, I, I was as far, and in fact, my mother at that point in time was working uh, for the uh, Little Rock Housing Authority, which was past, it was out at uh, Green, Green Mountain, is mm -hmm. that, is that yeah. what it's called? Um, which was past Horace Mann. Yeah. And so, you know, sh she just discussed how it was being built and stuff. My father didn't think that the architectural design was all that great, but that, <laughs> anyway, that, you know, it didn't look like the schools that we were accustomed right. to at that time. But anyway, um, um, you know, I was aware of that. Mm -hmm. Were your parents or, or even um, yourself mm -hmm. uh, members of the NAACP prior to 57? Yes. Um, my parents were, were NAACP members. Um, in, fact, uh, in fact, my mother helped to, you know, bring in new members. Um, the, uh, she had worked at the Arkansas State Press as a receptionist um, when, when I was in um, like the fifth or sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and she had helped the mayor. She had worked in the mayor's election. Mayor, I guess it was Cherry, if I remember correctly, as a kid. Um, um, so she was involved in in those activities as I, with me being small. I mean, mm -hmm. being in elementary school and junior high school. So it was just a part of our life. You mm -hmm. know that this is what you are supposed to do and. We did things by example, in a sense. You, you know, you would hear things, but you didn't just do a lot of talking about what you should be doing, you just did it, mm -hmm. okay? And I remember my mother selling poll tax, mm -hmm. and um, 
she also helped to, I mean, these are all volunteer type sure. things. My father didn't really want her working when we were children um, because really for someone who had not finished college, and she hadn't, she was at Philander Smith College when my second sister was born. Mm -hmm. um, she was in her junior year and she, when, when Luana was born, she basically came home to raise both of us. And I was in the first grade and, and, and when Luana was, or the year before, I can't remember, we were six years apart. But <clears throat> she didn't finish. And if you didn't finish, then you couldn't teach or you couldn't have a professional type job. Well, teaching and nursing was about the only two things that were professional here in Little Rock that a black woman could do. And my father didn't want her working in a home mm -hmm. as, as a domestic. So <clears throat> she was, you know, at home. So the things that she could do were like working as a receptionist, say at a doctor's office or black doctor's office or at the state press or, you know, do volunteer work. So and that's what she was doing until the Little Rock Housing Authority opened up and there, there was some government type jobs available mm -hmm. and that's, that's when she started working there. Um, and I know that you uh, worked for Daisy Bates mm -hmm. delivering the, <laughs> the state press. The state press, um, that's right. And so I'm sort of curious about um, sort of your, your knowledge of not just Mrs. Bates, but also how Mr. and Mrs. Bates you know, worked together. Yeah, and they did. Um, you know, Mr. Bates was a very kind, very uh, um, stable and uh, open-minded person um, who, who was very fatherly, in a sense, to, to us. Um, when I w had this little paper route, um, I, I had, I, I was, I felt good about that. Um, I was probably the only girl that, that had a little route <laughs> and it was my neighborhood route. And, uh, but um, it, uh, you know, I'd go in, actually, uh, I think my mother would bring the papers home to me and uh, cause she was working for her then. Uh, but when I would go into the office there, they seemed to work very well together. And uh, um, she was the person that was pretty much out front. Mr. Bates was the type that um, was kind of running everything there in the, in the office. Um, I think Mrs. Bates also brought in a lot of advertisements and, and um, got people to put ads in the paper and so forth. But um, it... Uh, they were the, the two that got the news out to the black community. Mm -hmm. And um, they had pictures of people that looked like me in there, you know, where the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, or the, we, no, it was two papers then. The Arkansas Gazette was the one that we, we purchased all the time, I guess. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, um, we read both papers, you know, it just kept, kept us informed as what was really happening throughout the country about Negroes or about coloreds. So, um, and you know, that was a part of our, our history, really, so. Sure, sure. Could you comment some, um, Jeff mentioned last night uh, being asked when he had gone down to register for Central, um, uh, after being told to go downtown, and mm -hmm. I guess, and bring his parents, about you know whether he knew Mrs. Bates and had he right. talked to mm -hmm. her about that. Were I mean, were those same type of questions asked? Of, no, of I I didn't get that question. Uh, when I went to register that first day, Miss Opie was very nice, and she smiled and said, you know, you uh, uh, you you can't register today. We've been asked to have you to come to bring your parents on a certain date and time, I can't remember what that was, but uh, to um, have a conversation or uh, with the superintendent of schools. Mm -hmm. And um, so I never got that question about 
do you know Mrs. Bates or did she have you to sign up to go and all that sort of stuff. I never had any of those kind of questions that uh, I can recall uh, that, that just kind of stood out where they would question that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was more in, intent in listening to what, what the superintendent had to say about us going to school there and those are the things that I remember. I remember people that, that came in that didn't have a seat and had to stand in the back. You know, um, I remember that it was a, a, a good number of people there. Yeah, yeah. So that meant that it was going to be a good number of us going, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I never knew what the total number was. They could have gone until many years later. Mm -hmm. So, but when I, I looked and said, wow, you know, there are quite a few students who plan to go to Central. But I'm sure for various reasons, one being economic reasons sure. of possibly losing their jobs mm -hmm. if their kids had gone to school there. Number two, those who felt it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. Number three, those who did not uh, uh, want to give up extracurricular activity. Sure. Um, you know, all those various reasons played a part in them not showing up on that, that day the first day of school. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only reasons, I mean, those are the reasons that I come up with. I've never asked anyone, you mm -hmm. know, why you didn't come, but sure. um, when you really look at it, that, you know. Yeah. So what did Blossom say in that meeting? Uh, here's your list of do's and don'ts, and um, you um, and know what you're doing by going to school here because uh, you're not going to be able to go to the football games or the basketball games. You're not going to be able to participate in um, the choir or drama club or the student council or uh, clubs or, uh, or be on the track team or basketball team or football team. Um, can't go to the prom. You can't go to the, to, you know. It, it was more of ca cannot. And, um, and that um, you expected to, you know, do well. And then he, he was very specific to the, to the males in the group, that you are not to date or even look at the, black, at the white girls. You know, he was very emphatic about that. Um, and, you know, the more I thought about it, um, it, that was one of the reasons that that the various groups that were against us going to school was using, you know, yeah. that they would be, the black men, the boys would be, uh, we don't want them next to our girls sure. and all that sort of thing. So <clears throat> I, I recall that being very emphatic coming from Superintendent Blossom, that this, you're not to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you, and the, the overall thing was that you were going to hear your name calling um, and that you were not to retaliate. Mm -hmm. You were to turn the other cheek, basically. So, um, you, you know, you, were, you just weren't supposed to get into a verbal contest with any antagonizing kids or what have you. So. Um, that it, that was just the way it was. I mean, it was more of a don't list than sure. a can do list. Mm -hmm. You know, so we individually, I'm sure, thought, well, okay, I'll be able to do this for a year, because it did appear that it that if things go well that first year, sure. then the next year, other things would open up, and then the third year, other things would open up. So as soft as a sophomore. You know, I'm sure Jeff and, and, and Gloria and I probably all thought in those terms that we might not be able to do it now, but we'll be able to do it later. And um, for Ernie, he had done most of those things, so he's a senior and he wants to probably, you know, um, just be able to go to Central, get his diploma from there, and go off to a good, good college. So we, we all, I'm sure, had different avenues of thought in that process, you know, in that, th during that time about this extracurricular activity mm -hmm. bit. 
So um, it was okay for me to give that up for a year mm -hmm. because I just felt in my junior or senior year I'd be able to get back to doing those things that I had been doing. And because my father was a brick mason and he had worked on a lot of schools and so forth, he was building down um, a dorm. He was on the, the, the uh, one of the, the contractors had this job at Arkansas State in Pine Bluff. Mm -hmm. and they were building the dorms there. So I would spend time in Pine Bluff with him. Sure. I would go down, like during the summer times. Um, so I, w I was familiar with college campuses mm -hmm. at even in junior high school and high school. So again, I'm looking up to older people right. and em wanting to emulate some of the things that they are doing and stuff. So I kind of had that kind of worldly, I thought, for Little Rock, you know worldly look about things <laughs> that I, well, I've been there already, sure. yeah. you know, and uh, so anyway, that's kind of, it, I was not giving up a whole lot in my mind because mm -hmm. I knew that I could get those other things as things got better in my j junior and senior year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I remember in that room, you know, meeting. In fact, <clears throat> I've been trying to locate Twice I've been down a couple of streets in downtown trying to remember where that building was. I don't know where, whether it, it, they've moved the administration building or not, but uh, anyway. You know, I'll have to check on that. Yeah, it was downtown somewhere, and I just remember going, going into to his office there. Um, in August of 57, I think probably the first indications that some trouble might, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, arise um, started coming forth in um, ads taken out and mm -hmm. uh, papers uh, on the same things that you had talked about, mm -hmm. black boys and white girls and all this, that, and, and the other. Um, having said that, how big a shock was it on Labor Day to all of a sudden see Governor Fraubus on the television. Well, he came on. I think it was Labor Day, and that he and he basically said he was. I I what I remember him saying, and what I remember thinking, is that he's bringing out the Arkansas National Guard to protect the citizens of Little Rock. That was the bottom line, as I saw it. Mm -hmm. And I surely considered myself a citizen. Absolutely. So I considered them there to protect me just as well. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, I might, I'm sure I was naive in those thoughts, but uh, now that I, you know, been looking back, hindsight and so forth, but that's really how I thought, that, that they were, I didn't know all of the underlining stuff that was going on. Mm -hmm. The stuff I read in the paper, yes, it, that was just a part of life, growing up in the South, that sure. you would hear and see those sort of things. But I just felt that once people got to know you, that if they were fair, they would either accept you or, and, and things would move on. So I just kind of felt that that was the way it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. It was like me meeting those white kids on the baseball field. They respected my ability to do what I was doing and we got along. So I just assumed that was the same way it was going to be once I went to Central. Sure. That it, but on a larger scale. So um, that, that, that's just kind of how I saw it. So the Arkansas National Guard, in my mind, at that day, they were supposed to be there to protect me just as well. Mm -hmm. uh, however, once we got there, we discovered, that, you know, uh, the commanding officer came up to the eight of us and the ministers that had walked with us that, that morning. And I kind of questioned why they were there, you know, because I just figured we were just supposed to meet and go together. Mm -hmm. But the adults knew better, mm -hmm. okay, but. Do you remember which ministers were there? They were uh, through the Little Rock, uh, min uh, Little Rock Ministerial Little Rock. Alliance. Um, uh, 
right off the bat, I can't remember, mm -hmm. but um, I, I want to say Ozell Sutton is, was one of the, the black men that were in the group, but I might be wrong about that. But um, Was your minister there? No, my minister was not there that, that day. Uh, he, he was involved in a lot of other things at a later time, but uh, um, no, he was not there that day. There were some Quaker mm -hmm. ministers, and um, I just wish I could remember some of them, but yeah. right now I can't. Um, do you remember if the Bates were around that day? They did not, no. They were not. I don't recall seeing them at the school, no. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm almost sure they were still at home mm -hmm. or maybe nearby, but no, not mm -hmm. at the school. Mm -hmm. I, I don't recall that. So how did that, that day unfold for you? Well, we were told by the um, um, commanding officer that they were there to, to not allow us to go in mm -hmm. and that there was an injunction of some sort. and. Um, it was very clear that we would not be able to go to school that day. And I could hear the group across the street, uh, right there at the mobile station, you know, screaming and hollering and all that sort of thing. But I still, it, I heard it, but it didn't dawn on me that it was, it was a, an unsafe place mm -hmm. at that time. Because I'm looking at military people and hearing that across the street, from what I had read and, and, and knew about the military and so forth, I just didn't have any fear because mm -hmm. they were there and, and the mob was across the street and if it got that bad, then they're supposed to take care of it. Sure. You know, so that, that, was, that was how I've always compartmentalized things. Mm -hmm. So um, we were told to go back home. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's what the ministers or whoever, whatever person was in charge of, the, uh, whoever the adult was who was doing most of the talking um, mm -hmm. to the commanding officer. I think one of us asked, I don't know whether it was Terrence or Ernie, or one of us asked one of the, the you know, you're not going to let us in? Is that what you're telling us? And so, um, and then when they basically said we were to go back home, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. So all I remember is going back to 13th and, and Park. Um, was it 13th or 12th? That's 14th. Daisy Bates is 14th. Is 14th. So we went back to 13th, 13th and Park and then went back home. Mm -hmm. So and then that's, you know, the next two, three weeks, sure. you know, was, was very hard for me. I, I'm sure. Um, I mean, in addition to everything else that was going on in those those three weeks, there is the there was the question of your schoolwork and right. you know trying to to keep up. So how how exactly did well, that see, work? Well, see, for for me, I'm you know it was that innate competitiveness. Mm -hmm. You know that the quiet type. I never re I, I talk more now than I ever did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't talk much. I I was one of those that. Uh, that believed in showing by example, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I knew that going to Central, that I would have to do well, continue to do well, because in a sense I was representing a lot of other colored kids, sure. okay? So I, my intent was to and I, and I knew I could do well. Started out at the same time with any other kid, I could learn and do as well as the next kid. I knew that. So the every day that went by, that said to me that I was getting further and further behind. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that. And I expressed that um, to um, you know, when we got together one time, I guess, and I, I, I know I made that comment to Mrs. Bates or to whomever that we were talking to at the time. And <clears throat> I figured whenever we got back in school, I was going to have to not only be twice as good as that white kid, I was going to have to be the super Negro, mm -hmm. okay, because I had to not only catch up 
and then be on equal basis to to continue on, mm -hmm. you know, to do well. And I, you know, I was in the National Honor Society. I've, I had always been on the honor roll, and I didn't want to lose that, number mm -hmm. one. And number two, I had never brought a C home in my life. I couldn't bring C's home, yeah. you know. You had to do well out in my in my household. <laughs> uh, my, my mother and father didn't, you know, they just didn't accept, you know, those kind of grades. So uh, expectation level was high just in my own household. Sure. Whether it was at Stevens or Dunbar, and that was to carry on into Central, yeah. okay? So I'm getting further and further behind, and I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, they were able, they meaning uh, Mrs. Bates and, and our parents or what have you, were able to get tutors from Philander Smith who volunteered, and also Mrs. Bates was able to get the, uh, I guess, through the superintendent of schools or what have you, to at least have our homework mm -hmm. being sent to us. Sure. And I think what they did, it, it, was, it all went to one place at one time, and then pretty soon that we were thinking within a week or so, we'd, you know, sometime yeah. <laughs> this week we'd be going to school. But <clears throat> after that first week, I think it's when all of that started falling into place. So we had the homework, and, but we didn't have any interaction right. with or hearing what was going on in, in the, the classroom. Class. But we could read and, and, and do our homework and send our homework in. And, you know, some, some of them, you know, made comments on the paper and so forth. So that kind of helped, mm -hmm. you know. But... Um, you do need interaction in yeah. in a classroom, so um, that that part really did bother me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that I was being um, again, I'm it is separated and not equal. Not equal. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, it, and and it, and there I was supposed to be in school. So uh, those three weeks were were uh, rather traumatic for me. Um, I had the diversion, though, when uh, I was allowed to go to the court hearing. Mm -hmm. when, and, and I, uh, uh, <clears throat> when Judge Davies was the, uh, listening to the case and uh, with Thurgood Marshall, Marshall and Wiley Branton, and I, I was one proud person, I mean, to, to sit in there and watch this take place. Sure. And what I, Thurgood Marshall has always been my hero in mm -hmm. this. So um, just the way he carried himself, the way he, he spoke so eloquently um, in, in the courtroom environment, that was the first time I'd ever been in a courtroom, mm -hmm. and it was a federal courtroom. Um, I was impressed with the judge. Um, I, was, I was really impressed because here it was a man they had to bring in from North Dakota. <laughs> So that said to me that all other judges had gone fishing or yep. something. <laughs> so it, uh, uh, he, he, here was a man that I felt that was going, that, that seemed to know the law and was very uh, uh, open-minded and um, uh, was going to be fair. And then there was Thurgood Marshall who, you know, you. If you read books like I did and watched TV, you had this idea of an attorney being a certain way. Mm -hmm. But Thurgood Marshall was not that type of an attorney. He was not the ranting and raving kind. Right. He was very factual. He was very professional, very polished. And I was very proud. Mm -hmm. So um, that, like I said, he, he, was, he was a hero of, of mine. Do you remember, did you get to interact with him? Oh, yes, many times. And, um, and he was an everyday kind of guy. Mm -hmm. He was not a man that uh, was above it all. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I really liked that. Um, he, he was um, an every, you know, he, he could talk with anyone. And um, uh, he could give you that, that um, lawyer's jargon if he had right. to 
uh, but everything was more of a, a matter of fact. I mean, it was where a lay person could understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had the opportunity to be in his company many times. I mean, he played cards. Um, <laughs> He was, you know, he, he told jokes, and he, he was just like one of my uncles. Sure. You know, and um, um, I had the opportunity to meet Adam Clayton Powell through him um, and, and, and a lot of others. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, I, I, I don't know. I was, I was so happy when he became Solicitor General and then later to be on the Supreme Court. Uh, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while all of, of that is going on uh, on sort of the on the federal court level, there was also this you know tremendous battle going on between Eisenhower and, and Faubus. Right. So were you also following that? Yes. Um, well, that that pretty yes to to the point that my thought was, how can the president allow this governor to? thumb his nose at the Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I saw it as a 14-year-old. Sure. I'm thinking to myself, the president is over the governors, mm -hmm. okay? He's, he has a higher position than the governors. And how can you let this governor basically thumb his nose at you, you know? That's a 14-year-old thinking, right. okay? Um, and, and I look back on history now and I understand they were fighting for so-called states' rights, mm -hmm. okay, oh, wow. where whatever that, you know, that, that the federal government shouldn't be telling the states what right. to do. But still, um, it, it, you know, that's their piece of justification. But I'm saying you're the president and you should tell him that he can't do this. Mm -hmm. that, that's my thought. And then when I saw and, uh, the, the TV clip, uh, the report that evening, uh, this one particular evening, where Governor Faubus had met with President Eisenhower, yeah. they came out, and the two of them were standing there. They seemed to be smiling. And I'm saying to myself, and I made this statement out loud, and I think that we were at Mrs. Bates' house, and uh, I made the statement out loud, we'll go to school tomorrow. And she said, well, not so fast, uh -uh. you know. And I said, well, look at them. You know, this is an agreement here, and, sure. and we're going to go to school tomorrow. Well, we, I don't think we went to school that next day. He, he got back to Little Rock and um, changed his mind, and changed his mind <laughs> I guess. So he pulls the Arkansas National Guard away and we did go to school, and I don't know what day that was, whether it was in midweek or first it was of the week. Friday. Okay, it was a Friday. When the police were there? The yeah. police were there on that Friday. So we went to school that day with police su su you know, support, supposedly. And you know, as, as you know, we were out by noon that day. Um, that, that was a very bad day. And, um, he had just pulled the Arkansas National Guard and allowed the Little Rock police to to hold back the mob, basically. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I was told it was like 17 policemen, but anyway, which was not enough no. to do whatever right. needed to be done. And we were, uh, you know, uh, they felt they couldn't protect us and they pulled us out of school. I was in geometry class when he knocked on the door and and uh, the policeman knocked on the door, and the next thing I heard, Carlotta, get your books and come, and and, and come, come to the door is what Mrs. Ryman said to me. Mm -hmm. So, I did that, and next thing I knew, it was you know walking down all these steps down into the basement to get into a police car, and we were told to put blankets over mm -hmm. our heads, yeah. which you know kids. You're wondering what's going on. It's dark down there. That was one scary day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was probably my, I didn't, he, I heard it, but I didn't hear it, what was going on outside. I was right. trying to focus on sure. schoolwork. schoolwork and so forth. And geometry was uh, new to me, and I didn't start out with everyone, and I was upset with that. And, you know, um, 
I, and I was in geometry class at that the time I was pulled out. But anyway, all I remember is that policeman telling the other policeman who was driving, put your foot to the floor and don't stop for anyone. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying that. And, you know, I, I said, this must be rough, mm -hmm. you know. And it was dark down in that basement and we, it was yeah. an incline. And he did put his foot to the floor and I stuck my head up and probably, you know, shouldn't have done that. But, you know, 14, you wanted to see what was going on. And all of a sudden the doors opened and light came in and he shot across that sidewalk and made a right turn. If anybody had been walking, they would have been killed. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was going into the lion's den. I mean, it was that sure. door and it turned, made a right and, and quickly got out of there. So that, that's what it was on that day. So if it was a Friday, now I understand why all the fun, you know, when I got home, my mother was, was pretty upset. And I mean, a lot of phone calls coming from relatives, you know, go up there and get her out of there. And, you know, the, this mob scene on TV and so forth. So I, I know that it was a lot of conversation that weekend, people calling my parents but um, my take was I was going to go back to school the next, mm -hmm. the next school day. So if it was that Monday, which we probably didn't go to school that day is my guess. Um, I can't remember. I, I can't remember how that, when, when President Eisenhower came out. Maybe he, I doubt if it was a Sunday night on news. So I have a funny feeling it was a Monday night mm -hmm. uh, that that he was on the national news and he said he was sending out the 101st. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how, how it went because really he didn't, uh, I think, and I've been told, I was told by the uh, attorney general some years ago that I met uh, his attorney general at the time, that he, he told, him, told the president that you have got to make a statement on this. Sure. That, that Governor Faubus cannot be allowed to continue mm -hmm. to um, to use the Arkansas National Guard to keep the children out. Mm -hmm. So um, that's and I and, and and the governor defied the president's meeting basically. A absolutely. <laughs> and I think that that's what ticked Eisenhower off more yeah. than anything <laughs> else. So you know he thought he had a gentleman's agreement and yeah. and. Um, Fabus gets back here and does just just something else yeah. different. Yeah. So I think that 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 did it. I, one of the nine, Melba, feels that President Eisenhower was her. She looks at him as her hero because he did send the hundred and first. Mm -hmm. And my take is, is it what took you so long? Sure. So that that's that that's kind of where I was with with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, I was very appreciative yep. of the 101st, and we needed them and so forth. Um, but, you know, what took you so long? Well, now that I'm older, I understand. It's all these, these political trampolines everyone right. is on. And right. then it, trying to save face and sure. all this sort of stuff. Well, that, you know, I had, I never understood that as a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, still don't like yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't like that. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the, the 25th and, and what happened on September 25th when the, um, I guess you had to meet at Mrs. Bates' house to okay. be picked up. Okay, the day of the 101st? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, we all met, uh, we were told to meet at her house, and we, which we did, so we had to be there earlier, and that the convoy was taking us to school that day. And um, um, I think we were all rather well, pretty joyful about that. Um, mm -hmm. um, there were some parents there. Well, most of the, I guess those that could bring their, their kids over there did. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, and so we got together and I, I recall Mr. and Mrs. Bates being there and saying what a big day this was and we've got the 101st here that's 
going to make sure that, that nothing happens to you. And um, I, I know we, we had a prayer that morning. And uh, then we all got into the station wagon and we had a Jeep in front of us and a Jeep behind us. And, and we felt pretty good about that. You know, we felt pretty comfortable. At least I did, and I'm sure that the others did too, knowing that we had the protectors there. And we got out and, you know, walked up the steps of, of Central with, with the guards on each side of us. Were so, you surprised that they had you walk the, the full length of the front campus and up the front steps? Yeah, um, because we did that day and probably some other days, but it got to the point where they didn't have us doing that. Sure. It was coming through the side doors. But um, we had to go to the, uh, to the office, so mm -hmm. it made sense okay. to go you know, the the long sidewalk and up the steps and through the doors because to the left was where the main office was. Mm -hmm. And we had to go in there to, to you know, be briefed again, I guess. Uh -huh. And um, uh, that's when, you know, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Huckleby was the vice principal of girls and um, I can't remember the man's name that was uh, vice principal of the boys and and then Mr. Mathis being the, the principal there. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure they had a few things to say to us. All I wanted to do was get to class. <laughs> and my first, home, first class was Mrs. Huckleby anyway. She mm -hmm. was my, my English teacher. But I guess with so much going on, they had to pull her out of the classroom for disciplinary reasons. And another uh, teacher took her place. So she didn't have her regular teaching schedule that year. Mm -hmm. um, because she needed to be more into the office as mm -hmm. a vice principal than anything else. So that day, you know, we went to school and had the guards and we were told when we were to have our lunches and so forth. And then at the end of the day, the guards took us back. The convoy was out there again and we went back to Mrs. Bates' house and probably discussed what happened that day. and. Then our parents or whoever was mm -hmm. driving us home took us home, and that started the regime of doing that practically every day and um, getting our homework and getting up the next day and starting all over again. Mm -hmm. So that went on and on and on. And um, for me, it just, you know, people would say, you know, how did you do it? And I said, well, you know. It really became a job. It mm -hmm. was just like getting up every morning yeah. and going to your job and coming home mm -hmm. in the evening, and, and that was the way it was. So after a while, um, the 101st were sent back to Fort Campbell, and uh, the... They were over in Jacksonville, I thought. They were at Jacksonville Air Force Base, because they were bivouacked on the... On, on the, the camp, sure. yeah, on the cram yeah. on the on the premises there for a while, and then some of them went to, and I guess maybe they did go back to because the they federalized the guard to come right. And, That's true and protect you right. And uh, yesterday, uh, Jeff was remarking on the uh, uh, rather great difference in being protected uh, by the Arkansas National Guard and the 101st. I I didn't see a whole well. The difference I saw, I guess, maybe was you know. Maybe that's when, I, you know, I, I don't recall the real big differences. I just remember that, that the thousand troopers were not all there anymore. They mm -hmm. were gone, okay? Um, but I knew that some of the 101st was still there because the, the, the commanding officer was still sure. there. So, um, I think he had an office there at the school mm -hmm. uh, because he participated in teas and so yes. forth that yes, was going did. on. <laughs> so um, he was there. Um, the Arkansas National Guard was federalized. And maybe, um, you know, knowing that they were there on the first day to keep us out and now they were there to protect us like they should have been. My, my take on the military was this is that they followed orders. Mm -hmm. If they were told to 
to jump, they jumped. Okay, if they told to jump a foot, they jumped a foot. Okay, sure. so it it was it it was whatever order they were given, they did. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I, I you know my guard was dating the girl next locker, the girl's locker next to me. That was turned out ended up being one of his girlfriends, one of the guards, because I had different guards more often than anybody right. else. <laughs> but anyway, um, the, um, it, it, as far as what they did, did they look the other way? Um, I can't say they did or didn't. Um, a lot of them were dating some of the girls. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and the other question has always been given to me during that time. Did you see, in, did you have a black guard? And no, no there were there no were no blacks in inside the school. No, no right. whatsoever. Now maybe they were a part of the hundred and first, but there I were never. Some, yeah. Okay, but I never saw them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, they were all white guards. Mm -hmm. Okay. It uh, um, that that's that's who we had. But as far as me having a feeling about the differences, I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, it was no no the big discrepancy other than the fact that the Arkansas National Guard had been federalized. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to sort of all of, you know, it seems to me it was just a crazy way to go to school. Well, it was <laughs> surely not the best way to get an education, but, you know, it was a necessity. <laughs> sure. Um, does anything stand out in your, in your mind about that year as either being particularly good or particularly bad? Well, the one good thing, um, I participated in a science project, and the biology teacher, Mr. Bell, H.K. Bell, was my biology teacher, and he encouraged me to to um, to um, put my project into the uh, it was a state thing or science a school fair. a science yeah. fair of some sort, and uh, he thought what I was doing was good enough to put, you know to do that, and I did. And you know I saw him um, thirty years later, and that's what he remembers. You know. <laughs> me being, because they did allow me to come up on stage to take a picture with the other, I was, I came in third, I think. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So the other two had been called up and it was a quick moment, sure. but it was a moment. Absolutely. Okay, and they took a quick picture and it was in the, in the paper. In the and, tiger, sure. Yeah, so. Um, that was, you know, I, that was some good moments. It was not uh, the fact that it was all bad. In, in the classrooms, there were some classes that the, the teacher did not control the classroom. Mm -hmm. It was on an individual basis as to how good that teacher was, right. as to whether they can control those bad apples mm -hmm. that would give us problems. Now, say in my gym class, um, I was, I was pretty well respected in there. Um, um, my basketball skills were, were good and volleyball skills were good. And um, so, um, you know, I was always elected to be on certain teams and so forth. And we had various drills and, and I was always in the top, you know, 1% of those mm -hmm. doing well. And um, um, I found out later that the gym teacher had just, she had just had it. I mean, after that first year, she transferred to Texas somewhere, <laughs> you know, so, and went to another school system. Um, because it was difficult for the various gym teachers. Mm -hmm. um, trying to protect in the shower rooms and, yeah. and, and yeah. so forth. And I, I could understand that being, being a hassle. Uh, with balls flying and, you know, accidents taking place and, and that sort of thing. Uh, so, and I, I, you know, all I was trying to do was to make good grades in each one of my classes. Mm -hmm. So that's where my focus was, along with not getting hurt, even though I had a guard, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, because a kid will be a kid. They will find a way sure. 
to antagonize you or harass right. you or what have you, even if you do have protection around you. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's like a challenge, sure. especially to those that, that they are making it their business that day to make it miserable for you. So it was that group, and then you had another group of people who, who just looked the other way, and then another group who tried to at least smile to let you know that they, they weren't against you. Mm -hmm you know but it's only so much they could do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying so and that was fine I didn't need anybody to love me I was not asked I was not going to school at Central for them to love me okay um, as much as you know I like most people I don't get a buzz by sitting sitting next to a white person it had nothing to do about that okay so anyway <laughs> Um, when the, the school year was over, um, I know that uh, some of you went to New York mm -hmm. the following summer. Did you go to New York? Yeah, I worked in a camp, uh, Camp Menasink, that, that, that summer, um, and thoroughly enjoyed it. And um, I, I, I developed some relationships with various people there that I'm still in contact with today. Mm -hmm. So um, it... Um, we actually it was a couple of things we did that summer that summer we received the um, the Spingarn medal right. the NAACP's highest honor and uh, we went to Chicago for some particular I can't remember what that was all about but Chicago Defender was a newspaper one of the mm -hmm. premier black newspapers in the country during those days and is still a, yeah. a, a viable newspaper, um, was a um, sponsor of us coming there. And I, I can't remember what that conference was mm -hmm. all about, but anyway, that was our first one. And then we went to Cleveland to receive the Spingarn Medal. And then in, in the end of July, I guess, or mid-July thereabouts, we went to New York. and. Uh, or maybe it was right after receiving the Spingarn Medal is when I participated as a, a camper at Camp Menace mm -hmm. um, that that summer. So it um, that piece was very relaxing. That part of it, going to camp, mm -hmm. because I went to camp here in in Arkansas. Sure. I went to to Camp Clear Fork as, as uh, either the Y or through Girl Scouts. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that, that, was, th that was good for me. It really was. And um, so I, I enjoyed that, that mm -hmm. piece of it. Then we get back here and find out schools are closed. Schools closed, yeah. The governor had decided to close all the schools here. Uh, well, all of the high, high schools. schools. So then there, you've got to adjust to that. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity, many opportunities to go to other places. Um, my uncle in Seattle, my aunt in New York, my aunt in Chicago, cousins in St. Louis. I mean, people call, all relatives throughout the country was calling and saying that I could, you know, send her here, she can go to school here. But my, my take on that was, after what I had gone through, you know, I, I, first of all, I didn't think that schools were gonna be closed for that long, okay? I knew that it was an injunction, mm -hmm. and that, again, my hero was going to that's right. Come to the rescue, and I just figured that this was going to not take very long. Maybe it would be another three weeks like it was, sure. you know, and then these schools would open up again. But that was not the case. So um, I remained here. The, the Roberts left. They moved to California. I mean, the juniors had a stake in the fact that they were seniors now. Mm -hmm out of the Little Rock Nine. And if, if I had been a senior, I think I probably would have because sure. I wanted to finish, finish high school and go off to college on a regular basis like most kids would. So, um, but I stayed and I went, I took correspondence courses through the University of Arkansas. And um, 
enjoyed that. You know, went to went up to Dunbar Community uh, Center, and um, the Girl Scout leader, I think, was kind of in charge of keeping everything going. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what was her name? I can't think of her name. It's a little, little short lady. Um, mm. Wish I could remember. I think she just passed away here not too long ago. But anyway, she she was there and uh, and some teachers, and you know, so we would do our our work, and it was some of the kids from Horace Mann too that were meeting sure. over there. So we would get our our work done, and um, then if we had time left over, we we played ping pong or we played cards or what have you. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's what happened to me in my junior year. Sure. And then come April, I guess by that time, I, I guess they knew, it was March or April, that they knew schools would open the following year or things were looking pretty right. good. Plus, I, they had the election for the school board and they were okay. able to get the moderates on. Okay, well then, I, I didn't know what was taking place, but I just knew come spring, things seemed to have a different air about right. things. And I went to Cleveland and lived with uh, Dr. and Mrs. Christopher and went to East High School uh, for the remainder of that semester. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, they encouraged me to go on off to college. In mm -hmm. fact, she was helping me to enroll at Ferris State College there in, um, um, in Michigan. I think it's where Ferris State is. Oh, I'm almost sure it was. But anyway, I was in Cleveland at the time. But I was already, already ahead. I, I was the youngest in my class. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I don't think my parents probably wanted me going off to college, <laughs> even though I could have, sure. you know. Um, I ended up going to Chicago and living with my great aunt and getting those other credits that I needed mm -hmm. at Hearst High School in Chicago that summer. Mm -hmm. So that summer, I took all that I could to make the credits work and um, then schools open up again in September of 1959. Right. And sure. that's when, I, you know, we went back to school. And I think it was like 13, um, uh, 13 black kids that went to school that year, two of us being Jefferson and I, because Gloria had gone right. to Kansas City sure. to finish. Her father had sent her and her mother there. Mm -hmm. uh, when schools closed, because mm -hmm. he was not about to let his daughter go back up there anymore. Sure, sure. In the in the midst of all of, of this, actually, I guess it's 57, um, Dunbar Junior College closed. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, I, it, it, it did. Uh, Dunbar Junior College. Right. Right. Um, which was right next door to my great aunt's house. Mm -hmm. See, that, like I said, my relatives were always around me as, as whether it was in elementary school, junior high school, or junior college or what have you, but they lived right across the street from Dunbar. Yes, that, that college did close, um, but I, I don't remember a whole lot about mm -hmm. that piece of it. Um, I just remember the fact that the junior college did close. Um, People I, upset, do you know? I don't recall. Mm -hmm. um, other than, you know, maybe a nostalgic sort of thing for my mother and father mm -hmm. because they had gone okay. to school there and had gotten their degrees, their associate degrees or junior college degree mm -hmm. there. But um, I, I don't recall a whole lot of um, conversation about that. Mm -hmm. it, it very well could have <clears throat> been. Sure. But uh, I just didn't recall, a lot. I, I don't recall a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sort of with a, an eye towards wrapping up here, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of got some big picture, picture mm -hmm. questions um, uh, for you. And the, the first is, um, how did, did what happened in uh, uh, 57 and, and 58 um, uh, 
have an impact on you regarding uh, white people? I mean, did it change it dramatically okay. or? No, it did not. Uh, I, w I will tell you this. I, you know, people say to me today that they, they're amazed that, at how I, you know, I don't seem to have any hate. And I don't because, first of all, I was not taught hate at home, mm -hmm. okay? Second of all, I had been exposed to other people, not only whites, but, but other nationalities, other ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. When I was eight years old, uh, I, I had the, the fortunate opportunity to go to New York City and stay oh, with, a, with an aunt. My, my father's sister. Now, she lived in the projects, mm -hmm. but, and, and, and because that was the beginning, of, that was right after sure. World War Absolutely. II and so forth, so they were building these. Right. And um, so it, it was a melting pot of people that I, kids that I played with. I'll never forget the first white kid that I, I, I that, well, I, I shouldn't just say white kid, but it was white male that had the name Francis. <laughs> and, I, and I found that this, this interesting and comical too, that you know, I was playing with this kid whose first name was Francis, Francis. blonde kid that lived there in the projects uh -huh. as well. And we, we played stickball, we played, um, I can't remember the game that was the use of a, a top. Um, a, a Coca-Cola top to go around the bases. But anyway, um, and he was one of my best friends, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and, and I don't know his last name, but I just remember that. Um, there were, were kids that spoke other languages. Mm -hmm. So I, I soaked that up even at eight, okay? Absolutely. And then I'm, I'm going to camp in the summertime here in, in Arkansas. Um, not that my folks had money now. It, you know, I sold potato chips to make my money in, in, in the Arkansas State Press so mm -hmm. that I could have money to, to do those sort of things and babysat. Um, the, I knew things were different than what I was seeing here in Little Rock. I knew things were different because of those experiences. Mm -hmm. I knew things were different by going to the movies. Mm -hmm. I knew things were different by reading the books. Um, even though it, 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 there was a big impact on me to see the picture of Emmett Till in the Jet mm -hmm. Magazine being killed in Mississippi, sure. okay? It was a big impact on me of seeing the picture of Rosa Parks Mm -hmm. being hauled off, going to the police station. Right. And here was a woman, you know, being treated that way. Um, and, and I knew all of this was happening in my environment of the South because of the color of our skin, mm -hmm. okay? I knew that. But I also knew that there, and I had hope that things were going to change. And because I, I I heard that from my family, sure, and I believed them. That, and I heard it in church. I believed them, and so I had that faith that things were going to change. And I had seen change. Mm -hmm. Our because of Montgomery, the following year, our our bus system changed. Sure, okay, uh, where we could sit on the bus without having to go behind that white line. Um, so that little bit of change said to me that things were, were, were going to eventually come to Little Rock, that I had been on a subway train in New York with everybody mm -hmm. being on, the, and I didn't have to sit at the back of that <laughs> subway train or the back of that bus in New York City. So I knew that that, could, that, that that was eventually what was in other cities were in, in the Midwest and then in the North were going to eventually happen here in Arkansas. And I always felt that Arkansas was, was a pretty moderate place 
it was not an Alabama or Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I guess that's how I looked at it. <clears throat> it was almost like we thank Mississippi for being here because that <laughs> made, we, we weren't at the bottom of the list. Right. You know, yep. uh, educational wise yep. or otherwise. <laughs> so, I, you know, it was like we thank Mississippi and Alabama. That, that, that just kind of kept Arkansas from being at the bottom. Sure. You know, um, my mother always said that we were, you know, we were part of the Southwest. And, you know, I just thought Arkansas was South. But I, what she was really saying is it's, it's west of the Mississippi. Mississippi. Sure. <laughs> so, you know, um, we, we live west. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so southwest. So, anyway. No, no, I, uh, that's, that's kind of how I, I saw things uh, then, you know, that I knew things were going to get better. And as far as whites were concerned, I knew white. I played. I respected them, and I figured that if I... As far as, as those that were against me, I considered them ignorant. Mm -hmm. I really did. That was how I stayed above everything. Sure. And I was not about to bring myself to their yeah. level. And I'm that way not only with whites, but with anybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, if this is not my level of attainment, or better. I was always taught that you, you know, to associate yourself with those that will help you to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've always tried to do. Mm -hmm. So anything that was going to pull me down, I didn't really want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was not about to come stoop to their level. Mm -hmm. And so for Superintendent Blossom to say to, to us, you know, not to retaliate or you're going to hear these words, uh, name calling and so forth, turn the other cheek. It was no big deal to me because I was not about to get into a verbal match with, mm -hmm. with, with anyone sure. about because that would have put me on the same level with them and I, right. and I had no intentions of being that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as historians have looked back at the crisis and journalists and everybody else, I guess, you know, one of the big questions, um, there's sort of two major questions that get asked. One is, how could this have possibly happened in Little Rock? Because Little Rock, of course, is seen as a, as a progressive uh, mm -hmm. city for some of the reasons that you mm -hmm. mentioned, the, the bus, and then um, I think the central uh, branch of the library uh, was mm -hmm. uh, desegregated um, uh, as well. And so that's sort of my, my first question on your thoughts on that. And then the and then the, the second um, question is if what your opinion is of sort of what, what was the crisis about? Was it, is it about race? Is it about power? Is it about politics? Is it money? Mm -hmm. Fear? Well, really to get to that, I think is about all of those. But anyway, um, the... Um, why did it happen here? I guess it was it was more because of the the weakness of our leadership here in this mm -hmm. state. I, I mean, Faubus really caused that sure. to happen. Yeah. Um, I think if he had taken a different um, avenue of uh, a different approach in handling that, uh, the, the dissension, and been a stronger leader, and basically said, I'm supporting the, the, the plan, the Little Rock School Board plan, I'm supporting the Supreme Court decision. I think if he had been that type of a leader here in this state, it would not have happened, mm -hmm. okay? But because he acquiesced to that group of people that his constituent, uh, constituency base that, that helped him become governor because it was a close race, he's answering to them and allowing them to, to tell him that, you know, you should be against these black kids going to the school. Um, 
th that's the reason it took place because some of those that that mob mentality that was across the street there I don't think we're all from Little Rock okay from what I've been told that some of those license plates that were on those trucks and so forth came from the hills of of Arkansas um, but then the city fathers too evidently didn't have enough power to put on the governor to say straighten this thing out I mean I would think that the businessmen of this city would have had something to say and and I think they did but maybe they didn't have enough power I don't know um, I don't think that the mayor I, I think the mayor and I can't think of who that was at the time Woodrow Wilson mayor. man that's right uh, mayor man um, I don't know how much power he really had either um, in, in, in putting his statement forward. Um, see, I, I think a lot of the problems of, of, of what took place felt on the shoulders of the so-called leaders. Mm -hmm. And kudos to Mrs. Bates and Mr. Bates because they stepped up to, to say that this was wrong and also to give uh, credence to what we were doing. So in, as far as their leadership goes and the leadership of a lot of the ministers, black ministers here in Little Rock, to offset what the white leadership was not doing, okay? Um, so it, that's why it took place, okay? I, it, and how it came across nationally. And it, and it did not look good. Um, you know, we're in this Cold War, we had got this war going on, uh, verbal war, a Cold War, you know, with Russia, the Sputnik, you know, we were losing ground that way, they were getting up into the space before us. And you know, here we are espousing as a country, um, democracy, and they are using these pictures of, of guardsmen, uh, fixed bayonets, children they're using that as propaganda against us how can you tell us that the communist way of life is wrong and here you are got you got guns on you know children you know so um and 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 you're allowing a mob mentality to to uh, be be foremost instead of protecting uh, your, your children so all of that was going on during that time. So um, somebody had to step, finally, you know, President Eisenhower did step up. But that, that happened. The bit about whether, you know, wh why it happened, I think all of those reasons you gave, you know, that there was a political agenda, that there was a power struggle, um, you know, that, that made some of these things take place. You know, um, there was that underlining thing that was going on that as youth we didn't understand and didn't see and, and could have cared less, you know, uh, about. But we were savvy enough to, to, after a while, to see what was going on. We, we also felt we were being used by the media too. But at the same time, if it had not been for the media, I wouldn't be sitting here today, okay, because the, the, the Governor Faber's group would have won out, in a sense. If we had quit, they would have won, okay, and, and it would have set back integration and education that more if we had not succeeded. I, I, rec I realize that today. If we had not succeeded, I think that we would not be where we are today, even though we've, we've progressed, it's not enough. <laughs> Do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, I'm, I'm just, just proud and, and that I did participate and, and stuck it out and persevered. Um, I'm the type of person that would have anyway. I mean, once I make a commitment to something, I. I do see it through and I try to 
to teach that that same sort of thing because that's how I grew up. Uh, I was taught. Um, I, I am um, a proud alumni of Little Rock Central High School, so um, I'm, I'm glad that I got that diploma. I needed that diploma to, for, to validate everything that I had gone through in 57, 58. Um, I am extremely happy that the academic attainment of that school is still the same as it was before we walked in there in 1957 is still the same today. I mean, there's still, I, any school is gonna have their problems. I don't, I don't care, any society, or, nothing is perfect. Um, one student came up to me last night and, and stated that they had gone to school there, but there were some problems there, but they recognized that that could be anywhere. So, you know, 10% National Merit Scholars come out of that school. A large percentage, a high percentage of students go to college and to the, mid, to the Eastern schools and to the Big Ten schools and so forth. None of that has changed. So that bit about blacks going to schools with whites will bring the academic attainment level down. It, you know, that stuck a fork in that, that's for sure. So. Um, I, I'm, I'm proud of the, of the fact that I helped to get that started. Good. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate okay. it. All righty.